What's up everyone? Welcome to the Empire Watch Club. It's been a while, Ryan here. So uh, like the name says, we are gonna talk about some watches today. about my watch history. I liked watches when I was younger. But as everybody knows, uh, I started surfing in my 20s. And uh, when I started surfing, I literally stopped wearing watches. You know, the surfer thing. I ended up uh, selling all of my watches that I bought, you know, in my early 20s or whatever. Um, and uh, one thing that I really noticed was that all those watches that I bought, like Panerai's, um, I had a couple APs, lost quite a lot of money, you know? Um, maybe like half to one third of what I bought it for was value that I sold it at. That, you know, probably kind of changed my whole perception and uh, direction of this. A few years back, I started slowly getting back into watches. Uh, I think one of the reasons was um, Sunny started really like buying a lot of like gold Rolexes. And uh, there was, I remember there was one moment where uh, we were at this, this job and uh, he was like, oh, hey, look, look at this uh, yellow gold day date. And I looked at it and I was like, damn, that shit looks fucking gangster. <laughs> and uh, and then I found out about the like the, the value, you know, retaining of Rolexes, you know, uh, and I was just like, wow, okay, let's let's get one. Um, so I bought one, you know, I'm not, I'm not into them like, like Sonny is, you know, Sonny's into the mechanics and uh, all the little minute details. Anyways, I bought my first gold, Day Day, so this is the, the fucking OG, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I think every uh, hustler, every G, every rapper, whatever, has, has one of these. You know, this was my first one, and uh, as soon as I bought it, uh, things that stood out was, you know, the weight. I really like the weight of it, and then it's got this, like, classy look. I know there are a lot of more valuable watches out there, you know, whether they're being PPs or, you know, even like the older APs now, but I just like this solid, manly, fucking look you know it's like a hunk of gold on your wrist so yeah that's how i got into it and then uh slowly but surely i started uh realizing that you know this is basically you're just like parking your money there yeah you're not gonna lose much if anything you leave it in the bank you're just gonna spend it on some random shit you know uh you, you do this and if you get lucky you can actually make some money that was kind of the thing with rolexes right that that the value of it is so good and um if you, if you look at uh rappers drug dealers <laughs> gangsters you know all over the world right uh when they make a buck they fucking buy either a gold rolex or gold chain or whatever this is like street culture if you need that money you know if you need it to like flip it like that you can flip it yeah and then you can either fucking palu or <laughs> or like go into hiding or you know uh yeah, I mean, that's that's what gold Rolexes are, right? Yeah, so over the years, I think uh, since three years ago until now, I, I bought a couple gold ones and uh, share them with you a little bit. Okay, let's uh, talk about them individually. So this is a uh, Rolex Daytona 16528. It's a Zenith. Zenith is means, uh, it means that if you look at the, uh, the chronograph, the three and the nine position, it's level, so that's, I kind of like the Daytona look. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I mean, everybody knows Pond they made this shit famous. Uh, but for me, it's just, I like fucking gold watches that are all gold and that are really shiny. <laughs> so this is, uh, yeah, the Rolex Daytona Zenith 16528. Pretty cool. And I think, personally, this is the most, this is the prettiest gold uh, Daytona that they make. Uh, yeah, that's just my opinion. So this is uh, the newest acquisition. You know, the funny thing about this watch is uh, nobody wants this watch. <laughs> so uh, the, the previous model is I think 16808. That's the nipple dial. Um, it has like uh, like dial markers or whatever, the, like, like stub, nub. Yeah, that one's the one that everybody wants. Uh, and the one after this is a little bit more uh, modern. But for me, I think this is kind of that model in between. Uh, the funny thing is, uh, I think the stainless steel model is about the same price as the gold one, which makes no sense whatsoever. But it gives you a little bit of insight into how Rolex works sometimes. Sometimes the stainless ones sell much more than the precious metal ones, which is pretty weird if you think about it, you know, because precious metals are much more expensive than stainless steel. But uh, yeah, so this is the 
Rolex Gold Submariner 16818. I bought this a few months back. I'm really liking it because uh, this one's got that, you know, really masculine, sort of like military style look, I feel. Yeah, I really like it. Okay. So this is the uh, Rolex Day Date and Rose Gold 41 millimeters. It's uh, discontinued. I think it's 218235. Uh, so yeah, this is basically the counterpart to like this one. This is a little bit smaller. Uh, my dad calls this one the gangster, and this one I call the gentleman because it's a little bit more like gentlemanly because it's like rose gold, you know. But uh, yeah, these are you know these are the day dates. Day dates are I think uh, I think they're like the backbone of every outfit. You know, you can wear this almost with fucking anything and it'll look good. One of my friends that one of the, a watch guy always said that he, he feels like Rolexes are kind of like Porsches. You know, they're, they're very durable and. Uh, reliable you know it, it, it'll run that forever yeah Rolexes are cool so that's like kind of kind of I have other ones but uh these four are like my gold ones that I wear the most I guess um, for me uh, watches are you know like I said to, uh, more, more more for decoration you know they're, they're kind of like uh, accessories for for my outfit for Sunny, it's like a fucking way of life man you know I, I think I think some of that has rubbed off, off, of, off on me but uh not not as much as you know this guy is crazy about watches man uh, for me it's more you know like as long as it's matchy matchy you know i'm good but uh for him it's it, it's a real it's, it's a real like lifelong passion of his you know cars and watches i'm more into cars than i am into watches i think uh rolexes are you know i mean if you look at the history of it you know paul newman you know that's the most iconic man right and that's why the Daytonas are worth so much. So as a summary, I'm on like a like a Rolex only flex. That's what I'm on. I'm on Rolex only flex. But um, not saying other watches aren't cool. Okay. So thank you for watching the Empire Watch Club. I hope uh, you enjoyed it, and um, we'll get Sunny in here to talk more of the specifics. Yeah, that's it, man. Bye.